One of the big themes at the World Economic Forum for the last uh, couple of years has certainly been artificial intelligence. But the future of food and uh, agriculture is certainly something that's absolutely critical. There's nobody better to speak about this than Nadir Godrej, uh, the chairperson of Godrej Agrivet. Thank you, sir, very much for being with us. Thank Great you. to speak to you once again. Uh, when one speaks about artificial intelligence and uh, the agriculture sector and food processing, uh, what is the link? Artificial intelligence has a big role to play in the food sector. And in Godrej Agrivet, we are using artificial intelligence in several areas. Uh -huh. We have a crop protection business where we uh, produce chemicals that help to protect the crops. Uh -huh. And to find out about crop diseases, we use photographs and we use artificial intelligence to study the photographs of the crops and determine what kind of disease it is. And that is very useful. In our oil palm business, we take satellite photographs of all our oil palm plantations, which are owned by smallholders, and they don't have the wherewithal to manage the plantations very efficiently. But once we see the photographs, we can give them advice. We can tell them what kind of fertilizer to use. We also do soil testing. All that gets analyzed, and wherever possible, we use artificial intelligence and give them the right advice to improve their yields and the quality of the oil they produce. And therefore, reducing inputs like fertilizers, uh, reducing costs as well, is that something that improves with the use of technology such as AI? Absolutely, because once you know the exact conditions of the crop, uh, you don't use uh, overuse fertilizers. And overusing fertilizers causes pollution and damages the soil. But if you use the right amount, it's very good. And you are collaborating with tech firms as well around the world. Uh, how is that working? Out? We do, uh, but we also use, we have a lot of artificial intelligence professionals in our own organizations as well, and it's working out well. We also use artificial intelligence in our food businesses to manage the stores. We see what is the shelf space share we have by photographs of the stores, which all gets analyzed by artificial intelligence, so it makes all our uh, sales staff very productive. Today, of course, is a very interesting day with the with the Trump presidency, and I think from from us, for us, for a minute, from an India standpoint, the issue of tariffs is critical, and obviously critical to agriculture as well. Yes. So, how do you look at that? Uh, it is going to be a challenge for us. On some items, we have high tariffs. It would be good for us to proactively reduce some of those tariffs. Uh, we no longer need such high tariffs for protection of our industries. And already many people are manufacturing, the foreign companies who are importing those products are already manufacturing in India. So by reducing some of these tariffs, we can make sure that we are not hit by high tariffs. And if China is hit by high tariffs, we are likely to benefit. Sustainability is absolutely key. Uh, sustainable development techniques are critical. It's also very much an agenda this time around. But for you at uh, Godrej Agrovet, how, how are you incorporating that in, in, your, in your manufacture? Right. Not only in Godrej Agrovet, but in all our businesses, sustainability is very important. In 2010, we launched our Good and Green program for environmental sustainability as well as social sustainability and it was working out very well. Subsequently, we had compulsory CSR spends and we used those to uh, help uh, socially benefit society at large as well as reach our sustainable goals. For example, to reduce carbon emissions, we use green energy, uh, we use a certain amount of solar, wind, mm -hmm. but more so we use biomass. Mm -hmm. In the oil palm industry, uh, biomass is a byproduct of oil palm, so we use that biomass. In other industries, we buy biomass such as groundnut shell powder. We are doing experiments with bamboo. Bamboo can be grown on a large scale as a very good source of biomass. The nice thing about biomass, it's a round-the-clock source. Uh, you can run the, uh, and you can generate both electricity and yeah. steam. We need a lot of steam in our businesses. Then we do a lot of water projects. The cost of a water project is very small, and we conserve water for 10 to 15 years, which is the lifetime of the project, at a rather low cost of 15 to 20 rupees per kiloliter saved annually. Wow, that's so that's huge. very economical. And uh, we did quite a few projects in collaboration with NABAD, and we're continuing some projects near our factories as well. So not only do the farmers benefit, not only do trees grow in those areas, so carbon also gets captured, but uh, we also protect the water supply to our own factories.
One final question. Um, you know, we face a crisis of air pollution across North India. A large, um, uh, you know, a significant part of that is because of, um, you know, agricultural residue being burnt in states like Haryana, Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh. You know, it's not one specific state. Uh, is there a technology solution to this where that stubble can be used to generate, for example, energy? Yes, the stubble can be used for biomass. The stubble can also be put back into the soil, so the carbon uh, helps the so next... Why aren't we doing it, sir? Because the farmers are in a hurry. And by promoting only wheat and rice, we are making a big mistake. We should get the farmers to grow other crops, have a bigger gap between the two crops. If the gap is very narrow, the only solution seems to be burning. But if they can manage a slightly longer gap, we can fit in the other solutions. We, Which are what, sir? Uh, which, as I said, to uh, collect the biomass and use it as a biomass fuel in a factory. Right. Or to put it underground, where it improves the soil quality. That's, there's less value to that, but at least the carbon emissions are, are not going to be very bad. Right. So, uh, and that can improve the crop yields. So there are many solutions, but uh, the important thing is that we should encourage a wide variety of crops and not just rely on wheat and rice which is aggravating this problem. And for whatever raw materials we buy from the farmers, such as maize and soya beans, we are encouraging the farmers to use sustainable practice. Regenerative agriculture helps the soil improve, uh, reduces the carbon emissions, and it doesn't cost much. It costs a li little bit more in the first few years, but the yields improve as well. So if someone finances that, it could easily be done. Lots can be done to make ag agriculture sustainable, and we should all work on that. Wonderful speaking to you. How many times have you been to Davos? I, I've lost count, but I think it must be 11 or 12 times. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. There you have Mr. Nadir Godrej speaking to us, uh, not just about his business, but about the larger theme about uh, sustainability in agriculture. There is a solution to the mess that we face in North India when it comes to agricultural stubble burning, but reducing carbon footprints, so very important. And of course, the use of artificial intelligence in agriculture as well.